I'm chatting to Proteus Women batting star Laura Wolfart, who's had an interesting story, education versus cricket. And uh, let's hear more about it. Laura, thank you so much for your time on Women's Cricket Zone. Thank you so much for having me. When I talk to your mom often, she says, uh, Laura's got some interesting choices to make, cricket versus education. Currently, where are we sitting with that girl? We still haven't made an official decision yet, um, whether it's cricket or medicine. Um, but I don't have a, long, a lot of time left, so I'm doing a lot of brainstorming, a lot of thinking now. And I'll decide by the end of the year, definitely. You finished matric with seven distinctions, so I'm sure the pressure from an education perspective has been intense. How have you managed to deal with that pressure? Because not many people have that option. Do you want to t take the education route or perhaps play for your country? I guess growing up, um, education was the main focus always. Um, it was always about getting good marks to get into medicine. And then cricket was just something I did on the side as a hobby. It's only been within the last year or two that cricket's really taken off and kind of taken over my life a little. Um, so I've had to put the medicine on hold, which was unexpected. Um, but I'm just kind of going with it. I'm really enjoying my cricket, so just doing what makes me happy. When was the first time you picked up a bat and what did you think at the time when you did that? I was about five years old. Um, I was best friends with all of the boys in school and they play cricket at break time, so I didn't want to miss out on the fun. Um, but never did I ever think I'd be sitting here playing for my country. But at the age of 11, you broke into the Western Province women's under-19 team. What did your teammates think at the time? Because here's this 11-year-old little kid coming into a side that perhaps had older players in there. Did they take you seriously? Um, I was very young in the junior for a long time. Um, I'm still sort of a junior, so... But I guess back then... I just kind of enjoyed my cricket so much and just wanted every opportunity that I could get. And the fact that they allowed me to play with them and took me in as well as they did um, at Western Province was something that I'm really grateful for. Cricket has changed a lot, hasn't it? Now it is a viable career. There are opportunities for you to grow globally. What are some of the markers you've put down for yourself as Laura? It's just like in my cricket career. Um, well, I think just to play for my country is for as long as I can. Um, I think playing for South Africa will always be the ultimate for me. Um, and I just really want to win games for South Africa. And World Cup is a big one as well. I want to win a World Cup with this team somewhere. Just about moving into the professional arena, are people feeling that, that uh, it's becoming, yeah? I think definitely. Um, women's cricket has really taken off since I started. Um, we are now a fully contracted team and there are leagues popping up all over the world. Um, and I think that's also swayed or changed my decision a bit. Um, the reason why education isn't the be all, if you know what I mean, um, because the cricket is growing so quickly and I don't want to miss out on those opportunities either. What is your advice to young cricketers who have that challenge, education versus cricket? Is there a middle ground? Is there somewhere you can find a sweet spot? I do think so. Um, maybe not with medicine. <laughs> it's maybe not the best one to combine. Um, but I definitely think you can study something um, in the meantime. And I feel you have to just because your cricket um, timeline isn't that long until about 35 ish. And then you have to do something. So I think it's important to do something while you're playing cricket and definitely study something. Who are your cricketing idols and those that, that you wish to emulate and, and perhaps one day follow in their footsteps? I think currently um, it's Meg Lanning from Australia. Um, she captains their side and in my eyes she's the most consistent batter in the world. Um, and yeah, it's just her consistency is something that I strive for. And she also, I don't know her personally, but she looks like that she lives for her cricket and does everything right in order to do that. So that's the kind of lifestyle that I want to live as well. Playing cricket in India, what is your most endearing memory of this tour and being able to go out there and see these cricket crazy fans coming out, not just for the matches, but for the team training sessions too? No, the crowd support has been insane. Um, that first game was nothing like I've ever experienced before. Um, I remember Lizelle went out and I had to go into bat at number three, but the noise was just deafening around me. Um, so it's definitely something I've had to try and get used to this tour, but it kind of pumps me up as well, so I really enjoy it. Hashtag we are more. It's not just a hashtag. Do you sense that the fans feel that from you? What is your message to the fans? I just think they 
really need to keep supporting women's cricket because it's really going to grow, I feel personally, just to see how far we've come from where we were when I started a few years ago. Um, it's been insane. And yeah, it's just to realize that we are all more than just cricketers, that we um, all have goals and passions in life and that we just all trying to come together and win games. Whatever decisions you make, I really wish you all the best. I think you've done well for South Africa, but I think there's still much, much more to come from you. Yeah, I hope so. <laughs> Thank you. Laura Wolfart chatting to us here on Women's Crick Zone.